2 Corinthians chapter number 5. Begin reading in verse number 14. The Bible says, For the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judge, if one died for all, then we're all dead. And that he died for all, that they which live should not henceforth live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them, and rose again. Wherefore, henceforth, know we no man after the flesh, yea, though we have known Christ after the flesh, yet now henceforth know we him no more. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away, behold, all things are become new. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ, and hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ, reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us, we pray you in Christ's stead, be you reconciled to God. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Let's pray. Our Father, we bless your holy name. Thank you for the truths of the word of God. Thank you for being a present help in time of trouble. Thank you, Lord, for being our hope and our stay. And thank you, Lord, for a place where we can truly shout hallelujah and bring our burdens to the altar. Now, God, we bless you. Thank you for the good singing, the good testimonies. Thank you for being a good God. Now help us the next few minutes to focus and concentrate our thoughts upon the things of God. Speak to our hearts, increase our faith, shine our lights, Lord, that we might go out and shine forth from the goodness of God and let folks know that Jesus saves. Now, Father, have your will and way amongst us. And, Father, we'll thank you for what you do, for it's in the holy and wonderful name of Jesus we ask it all. Amen. And amen. The Apostle Paul writing to the church at Corinth in his second letter to them. And in this verse, or in this chapter, he is uh, uh, speaking on uh, uh, some things of God, and he's also speaking upon uh, his apostleship and why he does what he does. And notice, uh, if you will, the reason for service. We find in verse number 14, he says, for the love of Christ constraineth us, because we thus judged that if one died for all, then we're all dead, and that he died for all, that they should live not henceforth uh, live unto themselves, but unto him which died for them and rose again. We see the reason for our service. The love of Christ constrains us to live for him because he died for us. And uh, when folks choose not to live for Christ, they lose sight of why we do it. I don't live for Christ to try to be saved. I am saved. Uh, and because he saved me, because he died for my sins, uh, because that he changed my life, uh, I want to live for him uh, because he loves me and my love for him constrains me to want to do the things Amen. of God. Uh, folks that... Uh, say they're saved and don't want to live for God, they got a love problem. Yes. They love the things of the world more than they love Christ. But we find the reason for our service is our love for Christ because he died for us. Notice, if you will, the regenerational shift. We find in verse 17, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. I wouldn't give you a plug nickel for a God that says he'd save you, but he can't change you. When God saves you, he changes it. You receive a heavenly nature, so you start desiring heavenly things. As a newborn babe, as a newborn Christian, you desire the sincere milk of the word. And as you grow in Christ, you desire meat from God. But you have a new nature desiring heavenly things. Folks that aren't saved don't desire heavenly things. But folks that are saved do desire heavenly things. And thank the Lord for that change, that shift, that regenerational shift. I'm glad I didn't turn over a new leaf. I'm glad he saved me and changed me. 
And then I want you to notice the reconciliation to be sought. In verse 18 he says, And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to himself by Jesus Christ. And he hath given to us the ministry of reconciliation, to wit that God was in Christ reconciling the world unto himself, not imputing their trespasses unto them, and hath committed unto us the word of reconciliation. Now then, we are ambassadors for Christ, as though God did beseech you by us. We pray you in Christ's stead be you reconciled to God. My dear friends, uh, when Jesus saved us, he didn't impute our trespasses to us. He reconciled us to God. Then he gave us the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation, and we are to take that to reconcile others to God. Uh, but we can't reconcile others to God unless we've been reconciled to God. And we see uh, the reconciliation to be sought. But then we see the remarkable sacrifice. In verse 21, For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. It is absolutely remarkable that Christ, who was holy, became our sin debt, that we might be made the righteousness of God. He took sin on himself that you and I could be saved. He became like us so we could become like him. And what a blessing. And what a remarkable sacrifice because he is a remarkable Savior. I'm interested in verse 17. The Bible says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. Two times in that verse we find the word new. You find new or newness mentioned 136 times. New is mentioned 134 times in Scripture. The um, number 134 and the multiples of it simply means divinely created. And when we became a new creature, we were divinely created, that new creature. It took an act of God to change us and make us a new creature. And what a blessing when God does something new. Everybody likes new things. We just had Christmas. Everybody likes new stuff for Christmas. Nobody likes uh, getting uh, used stuff wrapped up for Christmas. huh? Anybody like a half-used Yankee candle for Christmas? No, you want the new one. huh? Yeah. Uh, we'll settle for a used car, but we like a new car. But even a used car is new to us. Are you listening? We like new things. We like new clothes, new house. We like new things. New is nice. Well, the Lord has blessed us starting today with a new year. Amen. And that grants a lot of new things. And so with that in mind, I want to just give you a little thought tonight on new things for a new year. New things for a new year. Can I say, in this new year, <coughs> God will orchestrate some new tasks for each of us. There'll be new tasks, new jobs, new things for us to work at sure. this year. Can I say in these new tasks, there'll be new opportunities. God will give us new opportunities to be a witness for Him. New opportunities to be an ambassador for Him. New opportunities to tell others about Him. New opportunities. Uh, not only will there be new opportunities, there'll be new, new obstacles. Sure. Hmm. It is no accident that it come in tonight, open up a ladder that we needed a, a building permit for a, a sign that we've already got up. That's another obstacle. Hmm? We enjoy the new sign, but now we've got a new obstacle. Huh? <coughs> That's just part of life. There'll be new opportunities, but there'll be new obstacles, and there'll be new outcomes. You'll never have an outcome unless you have an opportunity or an obstacle. And thank the Lord for new outcomes. Mm -hmm. You know, if uh, Louisville went and went to the bowl, they wouldn't have won the bowl game. If UK went and went to the bowl, they wouldn't have won the bowl game. I don't even know. Does Indiana have a football team? I don't even know. Do, do Hoosiers have anybody? I, oh, okay. Indiana's in the bowl game. But you get an outcome because you have an opportunity. You got obstacles. They had to play the, play the game. But there are outcomes. And can I say this year there'll be some new outcomes. 
because of new opportunities, new obstacles, bring new opportunities, new outcomes. <coughs> what we have to understand, there's new things for a new year. The Bible talks about, <coughs> excuse me, the Pharisees, they went about bringing out dead bones of the prophets and they rested on the laurels of the old things. Listen, there are some old things you do not change. <coughs> Give me a second, I'll get through this. You don't change the old past and the old Bible and the old, way, old time worship. But there are new things you've got to seek after. Churches quit growing because they quit seeking new opportunities to get the gospel out. Sure. Now we can sit here and never give out another track, never tell anybody about Jesus, and what will happen is we'll start dying off and before long we won't have a church. Yeah. So you've got to have new opportunities. You can't have new outcomes. Let's have new opportunities. <coughs> can I say, when you start giving the gospel out, you're going to face new obstacles. The devil don't like it. But there'll be outcomes. So there'll be new tasks this year. Thank the Lord for new tasks. New opportunities. Yeah, what a blessing. Thank the Lord. I'm glad I'm part of a church that wants to get the gospel out. Maybe a new opportunity to build a new building. Maybe an opportunity to mm, expand and do greater things for God. Thank the Lord for that. Not only new tasks, but there'll be new trials. Amen. Always going to be new trials. Amen. I got to thinking about a trial, which is nothing more than a test. Uh, a test is just a measure of how much we've learned and how much more we need to progress. When you face a trial, it's not because God's against you. It is showing you how far you've come, but yet how much farther you need to go. It's always a measure of your faith. Amen. So when you face a trial, don't think it's something terrible. Learn from it and go on. Amen. But you'll face some trials this year. <coughs> Sometimes it's our health. Sometimes it's our pocketbook. Sometimes it's in our family. Sometimes it's in our community. Sometimes it's in our church. You know, face trials. It's just a measuring stick of where we are with God and how much closer we need to get. Can I say this? God will orchestrate new talents to be discovered. Every one of us have a lot to offer God. But a lot of those things lie dormant until we're willing to get out of our comfort zone and discover what we really can do. When we think of talent, we think of playing an instrument or singing or something of that nature, but there are a lot of other talents that people have. Things you can offer out of your life to God that He can use for His glory. Sometimes it's something you never knew you could do. <coughs> Excuse me, you can teach a class. <clears throat> Amen. You could participate in a ministry. You can get involved in going out on visitation. Boy, we had a good year last year on visitation. Sure. <clears throat> I'd say last year we probably came close, Brother Randy, to Dublin, what we had going out the year before. More than double. Wouldn't it be a blessing if we more than doubled it this year? You can do it. You just got to discover that talent that you've got to be able to go and do it. It's not real difficult. It's a joy watching them children go out. Man, they get after it. it it'll it light your fire watching them kids. That's why I hope you come out to the youth meeting. It'll light your fire. Huh? But there'll be new talents to discover. Things you can do. Do you know what it takes to do something for God? 
Just having a desire to want to do something for God. Amen. Just ask and say, Lord, let me do something for you. Oh, he'll show you something to do. And just do it. It'll probably scare you to death. Oh, no, I've never done that. Well, just try it. Hmm? Worst thing you say, well, that one wasn't it. But most of the time you find, boy, this, this is great. There'll be new talents to be discovered. I thought about this. New things for a new year. God will orchestrate new trainees to be discipled. Amen. Thank the Lord. We'll have folks that we can share the gospel with. They'll get saved, and we get to train them. Amen. Young people getting to be trained in the things of the ministry. Thrilled my heart hearing that Brother Pete taught the kids about the Trinity. What a blessing. Kids are learning about the Trinity. Some of you adults need to go back to that class. <coughs> what a blessing. Well, more folks come in, more need to be discipled, more learn about the things of God. What a blessing when you see people hungry and wanting to learn about Jesus, about the things of God. Thought about this, there'll be new triumphs. There are going to be some great successes this year. Some of you are going to have prayers answered that you've longed to see answered. Some of you are going to see great things happen in your family and in your life. Wouldn't it be wonderful to see the triumph of revival this year? And wouldn't it be wonderful to see the triumph of triumphs, the trumpet sound, and we're out of here? Wouldn't that be wonderful? Huh? Could be this year. Huh? Oh, great things can happen this year. New triumphs. Some of you have been wrestling with things and struggling with things. Maybe this is the year God gives you victory over that. What a blessing. Great triumphs. New triumphs. I thought about this, though. Could be the year that there be new tears. <coughs> Sometimes life brings tears. Amen. Brother Brian talked about losing some friends here lately. Not all of them knew the, knew the Lord. Those bring tears. Sorrow. Well, you wanted to see them saved. question, boy, could I have done more? be tears this year that you haven't ever shed before. See, we'll face losses. Amen. Sometimes we lose battles. You know, we can draw strength from the fact we can read the back of the book. We win the war. war. But sometimes you lose some battles. You know, shed some tears over them lost battles. Sometimes you lose friends and family members you'll shed tears over. Sometimes we lose members. Some pass away and some just go away. You shed tears over those things. There'll be new tears for our losses. There'll be new tears for the loads that we'll have to bear. Some of you last year faced things you never dreamed you'd ever have to face. Some this year will face things they never dreamed they had ever, would ever have to face. Amen. There'll be tears, to sh new tears to shed. Some will shed tears from lessons that they failed. They didn't pay attention. When that trial came, they failed. Just like Peter when he was sifted. He went out and he wept bitterly. And some will face tears from the times they let Christ down. They'll shed tears. Amen. There'll be new things for this new year. There'll be triumphs. There'll be trials. There'll be tears. But when it's all said and done, The bottom line is, if we seek Christ first, we put Him first. He blesses us to live throughout the year. We can look back without regrets. So as we enter a new year, this could be the year. So why don't we embrace every day 
to try and make a difference in somebody's life. Why don't we embrace every day to try and get a little bit closer to Christ? Why don't we embrace every day and seek Him just a little bit more? No telling what the end results will be. But I will tell you this. If you seek Him a little bit more each day, when it's all said and done, you'll have no regrets. You'll certainly be glad you did. If we look back on last year, I'm sure there's things that we wish we'd have done maybe a little different. Took a little more time here, a little more time there. But it's gone. The beauty of today being the first day of this year, we've got the whole year ahead of us. And we can change this year what we wasn't able to do last year. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things become new. I've got good news. We always associate that with salvation. But do you know in Christ, every day is new? Every day is new in Christ because His mercies are renewed every day. So we have the whole year ahead of us. So why don't we look for the great things this year? Seek the great things this year. Do our part this year, and it starts all by just doing a little bit more each day. No telling, no telling what God will do if we'll put Him first this year. I challenge you to do this. I read this this week. A goal is a goal when you write it down. If you don't write it down, it's just a dream. So why don't you take some time over the next few days and write out some spiritual goals for, your, for yourself. Just write out some spiritual goals. Say, preacher, I don't know what you're talking about. Write out, I'd like to read my Bible through this year. It might be one of your spiritual goals. Write that down. I'd like to pray a little bit more each day. Write that down. Set yourself some spiritual goals that you would like to do this year and write them down. And when you write them down, look at them. Pull them out once a week and look at it. You know what happened? Your mind will start being trained to do those things that you set out as goals to do. If you don't set out goals for yourself, you won't accomplish anything. If the Lord lets us be here next year at this day, you'll say, wow, another year went by. Let's put some feet on our prayers by setting some spiritual goals to do more for Jesus this year than we did last year. And if we'll all do that, we can have a great impact. Just think about if every one of us just won one person to God and got them in our church, our church would double. Just one. But I know how it works. There'll be some who won't buy in. But there'll be some who not only reach one, they'll reach two. So let's all just, us, us Wednesday night crowd, let's just purpose to do a little bit more each day. No telling what God will do in this year. No telling the lives we can impact and no telling what Jesus will do if we'll all just commit to do just a little bit more each day. So I challenge you, set some spiritual goals for yourself. Write them down and let's see what God does in the year to come. All right, I'm done. Let's all stand. Brother Clinton, get a song of invitation. Maybe you want to come and thank the Lord for the year he gave you. Maybe you want to come and ask him, Lord, what can I do for you? The Apostle Paul did. Lord, what would you have me to do? Maybe you want to come and just tell him you love him. Well, his folks are coming. They're picking out a song. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We are thankful, Lord, for your choice blessings and the love of Christ. Now, I pray you would constrain us all to do a little bit more each day. Help us to impact our community for Christ. Help us to impact our families for Christ. Help us, Lord, to be vessels that bring honor and glory to Christ. Now, bless in this invitation. Help folks. And Father, we'll thank you for what you do. For it's in the wonderful name of Jesus we ask these things. Amen. 
Did you know that IBC is now on iTunes, TuneIn, SoundCloud, and Google Play? Head on over to your podcast provider and subscribe today. And as always, thanks for listening.